today we're gonna cover Outlook and it is a little bit tricky when we start talking about Outlook. This is very old application, 20 plus years old. Everyone has used it and to some extent. So it's really hard in an hour to cover everything, especially now that we have the client and we have the web version that everybody, almost everybody with office licensing has access to it. So I'm gonna do my best to cover some of the best tips I have that I think have been helpful to a lot of the clients I, I worked with. So I'm gonna go over the Outlook application, the client, I'll show you a few tips. Uh, this is not gonna be a demo, I'll do it through the PowerPoint, but then the demo will be heavily on the web application site to show you how powerful it is. I personally have switched to using the web only application from the Outlook client. It takes so much of my laptop's memory. It could be heavy sometimes, depends on what you do. For me, I have too many accounts, so I'd rather use the web version and I can switch easily between all of them. And then we'll have time for a Q&A at the end. But it will be quick where I'm gonna go over a lot of different features as I get into the web application. Now, in terms of accessing this, this is very similar to a lot of other presentations I had where I showed what tools uh, and how you can access it. Outlook really can be accessed from anywhere. You have the desktop app, you have uh, from the web, you can access it from any browser because there's a URL, but also on your phone. All phones are compatible with Outlook. Even if you don't have the Outlook app, you can just log in from your Safari or Chrome. Now, this is also managed by your organization. So what I'm saying is usually the general policy. A lot of organizations do have specific policy for using Outlook on your phone uh, and even from the web browser on your phone. So keep that in mind. If it doesn't work, you might need to follow your organization's instructions on how to get access to it. The left hand side, like just or from the from your computer to access it is something that's the client. That's when I say the client, I mean the Outlook application that you have installed on your on your device. But then the web is when you go to your Safari, Chrome, or any browser use Edge uh, and access your email by going to Outlook uh, web browser. All right. Next, this is a just quick start guide. I if you can, I'll send this over as well after, but it is available online. If you just Google Outlook Quick Start Guide by Microsoft and other places, but it's important to know what everything means, every side of your Outlook client. So now we're, we're starting with the Outlook client. You got, they're, they're trying to move things around a lot. And I do also like to give a little bit about the history of the product, not just dive into it. So Microsoft is making a lot of changes to the client. And you probably have noticed in the last few years how there were a lot of shifts. If your organization is also an early adopter to some of those uh, and they're doing updates regularly, you might be seeing a lot more changes than others. They're moving things around because they want it to look very similar to the web application. The ultimate goal by Microsoft is just use the web. Why do we have the client and the web? Now, I don't, I'm not saying that they're going to get rid of it in the next years or even five years. It's going to be around, but to save money for some organizations, they're telling them just use the web app uh, rather than using the client. And it's very powerful and robust. You, you don't need the client. So if they make it look the same with very, very similar features, then users are more likely to use the web application. It can go the other way around because there are some users who are web only. It's specifically in education. A lot of students come out of, to go to college and they're using the web application of Outlook. Then they go to the workforce and they have the Outlook client. Now making it look very similar and in terms of look and feature, then that's good for Microsoft. So that, that's where they're headed. And that's why we're saying a lot of this a lot of these changes in the client. But from a navigation perspective, uh, just make sure you understand the top uh, navigation ribbon and what it does and how you can switch to, um, to, to view, to change your view, uh, send and receive messages. On the left-hand side, you can switch 
between things and that can be moved to the bottom still or you can switch between mail calendar contacts and so on and then the left hand side navigation the middle is where your emails are on the right all of that can be changed from the view section so i don't want to spend more time on this we're very familiar with outlook overall so um, i'm going to get into some tips and new features in the outlook client so the first one i wanted to include now uh, over the last 10 years to this day i still get the voting button and it's one of my least favorite things to see in an email is the voting button. It's just not user friendly. It's not a lot of times I miss it. They tell me vote if you like pineapples on pizza or not. And I, f I keep forgetting that there's I have to go to the top and vote. If you've used the voting button, you, you know what I'm talking about. So Microsoft recently, not very new, but it's been around for a bit. They keep improving it. There were some bugs in that feature that I noticed when it first rolled out. Now it's a lot more robust. If you have an office license, then you have this and you need to be logged in with your office uh, work or school uh, account. But you can actually add a poll to your email that looks like this using Microsoft Forms and the data is saved in Microsoft Forms rather than sending the users the vote button and uh, getting a bunch of email replies with yes, no, pineapple, no pineapple. So that's really nice way of, and a user-friendly way of sending uh, those surveys. You can even, after you send it, modify it because this is saved in Microsoft Forms. So you can if you messed up something, you can actually modify it. The users will see the new version on their end. You can view the results and you can vote right away. So to get to it, you just go start a new email. You need to uh, um, create a new email. And then in the insert tab, you should see poll. And then you can add a bunch of options. You can add multiple answers to a question and allow users to toggle between them. There are a lot of settings that you can manage as well. Um, so this is the first feature I wanted to talk about. The second one, you probably have played around with it, Oops, sorry, but may not used it. If you use it, this is awesome. Uh, I use it in a lot of my repetitive uh, jobs, jobs where I get a lot of questions that are repetitive. Users ask me the same things over and over again. So it's called quick parts. Uh, it's usually on the top under the insert. Uh, section so you can uh, use this one basically to send if you have the same email that you send the content again and again and again then this is what you need uh, what you have to do is let's say um, the thing that you always send all the time you put it in an email then you highlight it and then save the selection into the quick parts gallery I have the steps here so you see how I have the email written you highlight it go to quick parts, save selection to quick parts gallery. These are the steps. Now, once you do that, next time you have an email asking the same exact question, all you have to do is go into that same button that says quick parts. And then you can add a, uh, you can add that saved text into your new email. It's as simple as that. You can have as many as you want and you can fill it out. Some people use it for additional signature. I've seen that. Um, I've used it a lot in my training sessions. So when I finish a training session, uh, I want to reply to all my attendees. So I have the same format for an email saying, thank you for attending this training session. Uh, here's how you can find inf more information about the video. It's the URL to the stream site internally within the organization that I'm doing the training session for and so on. So. All I have to fill in is the title of the of the invite or what the topic was, and it gets in. So uh, it really saves you time if you don't want to put them in one note and the formatting will be saved. Everything will be saved the way you want it. So it's really powerful uh, tool if it's used correctly. And if you remember it, a lot of times I forget about it even. But also I switched to the web version, so it's not as useful for me there. Okay, so the next one is quick tips. Um, 
so quick oh, sorry didn't go to the next page here you go um so another other client tip here is the quick tips so they uh, quick steps sorry they you already by default have a bunch of quick steps usually on the top of your outlook so if you look on top you should see them uh and, and these are the default ones that are safe for you it's supposed to you to help you with um repetitive tasks that you and actions that you take on emails that you receive so for example when you get an urgent email from one of your colleagues um, but it's after work hours but you saw it then you you can you want to flag that and then change the status to high importance and send a reply saying i'll get back to you tomorrow these are four steps that might take 30 seconds and you might have a lot of these so what you can do is instead of doing it over and over and over again you just need to use this feature it's in the home tab in the outlook app and you can create a new quick step rather than using the default one and you can tell it i want this step in here you can see the step guides is down you can tell it i want the first action to be to flag this message the second action i want it is to reply to this user uh, saying i'll get back you to you tomorrow the third say the third uh, action you can say move it to a folder that is to do or some other folder that you have so you can really customize it's more of an automation way built in without having to create rules and other things you do need to click that button the one way i use it the most personally is to move emails to folders so i have a bunch of folders on the left hand side of my outlook client and then if i get an email related to client a or client b then i know this needs to go to this folder so i have a shortcut saying move it to this folder and mark it as red so two actions very quick and i also you can add shortcuts so you can say control shift and one of the numbers from one to nine uh, you can say, if I click on that, then it will automatically, as a shortcut, move it to the folder or take that action. So an action can also be a shortcut uh, that you have. Um, you can create, as you can see on the right-hand side, there are a bunch of other options forward as an attachment, uh, create a meeting, and there's a lot more um, ways you can use those quick steps. All right. The next thing I have here is um, distribution groups. So I might have seen someone talk about shared mailboxes in the chat, but we'll get to that later. I don't think this is really related, but distribution groups, I've worked with so many different organizations and it's managed differently. This could be helpful to some and not to some other organizations, but uh, a lot of distribution lists are managed by the organization. You can uh, open a ticket and ask them to create it or you, they allow you to create your own distribution list that can be added to their address book but you can also create your own distribution list that is personal the users will see it as individual contacts not necessarily as a group uh, there's no uh, mailbox necessarily associated with this one but for you if you always email the same 10 people but just you do it, they don't do it necessarily, then you can create your own distribution group. And that, if enabled, you can do it from the people tab on your, uh, uh, or the contacts tab in the people section, and then create a new contact. And then the new contact, you need to select new contact group. That's the drop down. I have the new version of Outlook. For some people, it's not in a drop down, it's on the right hand side. So depends what version you have so once you click on contact group then you can name it after you name it you can start adding team members or external folks to it you go to your email type in that name and voila you have all these email addresses added in one button and then you can remove any that you don't want to see all right now um the last thing to talk about some shortcuts shortcuts there are a lot of shortcuts that you can use within um outlook client and it's really really valuable uh, and that's 
kind of they're different between the Outlook client and the web app in some cases. So I would recommend that you take a look in, into them. Um, you can, uh, I forgot, there's a shortcut to tell you what the shortcuts are. I think it might have been control. I should have added it as one of the tips, honestly, but control uh, maybe forward slash the one next to the dot. Uh, if you click that, I, I think it shows you all the shortcuts, um, but it, it, that's what it is on the website uh, on the OWA. But these are really helpful ones that allow you to quickly, these are the most common also within Outlook, uh, allows you to navigate the application very well. Uh, I like the reply and forward. I use this a lot. I know it's a button right there, but if you're someone like me that uses the keyboards, the keyboard a lot, then this would be really nice to use. Uh, one thing I wanna call out, that I actually do not like about this is send email message, control enter. There's so many times I click, I wanna, I'm like typing something, I use the control for some reason or the shift, I hit the control and I'm just entering a new line and I send the email. Um, usually it pops up telling you for if you're using it the first time, oh, you're about to send an email and you can hit cancel, but control enter, be, be careful with that one. That's about it for the what I have for the client side. I did want to only spend 15, 15 to 20 minutes on it, and I want to move on to the web version. I really want to show you. Stick around because there's really a lot of cool features that I want to show you on the web app. And it's some something when your client is not working, you're going to need that. You need to go to your browser and access your email somehow. And I guarantee you, all of you at some point, had this issue where your mail cannot be received and the spinning thing at the bottom of Outlook is spinning, telling you trying to send and receive email or you're trying to refresh or you called your IT department. All of that is not a problem when you know how to use your OA and that's what I wanna show you next. So any questions, let's, let's take a break here in between, see if there's anything specific to the client you wanna ask about or about the things we, we talked about so far. It does look, <clears throat> excuse me, it does look like there were a couple que questions. Um, Patrick Taft said, I have a group using a shared mailbox, and we're seeing a lot of instances of collisions where two people are working the same email at the same time. I'm looking for some settings or tools to <clears throat> alleviate this. Yeah, this is... Um... <sighs> It's been a problem for years also, uh, group mailboxes, multiple people. And I've seen companies say, I'm going to start at the bottom. You start at the top. Um, flagging it sometimes help. I've seen some teams flag the email by the name of the, like the person has different color, different flag associated with them. But you run into the issue. What if it doesn't sync right away and update? But if you use OA, then that's not a problem. But anyway. That, that's one way is that, uh, another thing I saw is they move it into folders. Uh, so they create a folder per uh, team member and they um, they would go into that folder and only work from that folder. And the last thing I've seen is rules. If you've used rules in the past, and I know I didn't show it here because it would be a whole hour session. Rules can be used to when you receive an email to a group mailbox, you say, move it to a specific folder and so this way it's automatically being moved and people only work and everybody would have the same rule in their outlook so they're seeing only everything in the folder so that those are some ideas i definitely would need to sit and see what that team is is doing because uh and how many emails they're getting is it uh a lot that it's hard to manage using rules or moving it to folders um I've seen teams use, um, I actually helped with the implementation of that one as well, where they use Microsoft Planner tasks. It was it was very interesting. It worked out, but every time an email is um, sent, uh, they receive it in the group mailbox. They used, uh, not instead of rules, they used Power Automate to take that email and save it into a planner dashboard where it created a task and assigned it to one of their team members. Now. If I had to go back in time and change this, I would create a SharePoint list where you can list things and mark them to users maybe. Um, 
but that's another way a workaround that they try to use. Um, maybe you can forward it to the individual to their inbox saying you work on this, but it is hard and I do understand how it could be difficult. There are too, too many different ways that this could be managed. Um, I hope Patrick, this helps. Yeah, he said he's tried uh, rules and they do flag and move emails yeah. more than two people in the, in the inbox, we end up with overlap. One thing you mentioned, Kamal, is with OA, which is everyone listening, and Kamal's already mentioned it, but it's the Outlook web app. You mentioned that wouldn't be a problem. Why would that change things? Because it's more live and updating quickly than your client. One, two, the, the problem with that, you need to have E3, E5 license. But I'm assuming if they're using the client and they do have E3, E5 license because F licenses and others do not allow you to have group mailboxes. Um, that's because you don't have the client. So it's the same thing. Um, so yeah, there the updates are more frequent. You can use Microsoft or Office uh, groups, which is a lot more powerful than using the GMBs group mailboxes. So um, give it a try. We're going to move over now to the web. I unfortunately don't have a group to show you. Maybe I have a group 365 that I could show you, but it updates very quickly. So if you read an email and I'm flagging it, it will instantly show for the other users. So cool. Awesome. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll just talk about this one observation. Then we got some more questions. We'll, we'll meet, we'll, we'll cover once you get closer to the end or whenever you open it up for questions again. Uh, one observation from Peter, as he said that if you try the new outlook, if you enable, try the new outlook, uh, the layout looks very similar to the OWA. So yeah. just like you were saying, where Microsoft's trying to make this transition easier, the new outlook is looking even more like the web outlook. So if anyone lost right now, as Kamal is mentioning, there's the outlook application and then there's the mm -hmm. web outlook. Web application, the actual application, they're trying to make more and more like the web to make the transition easier because inevitably that's probably where things are gonna go, but maybe not. Yeah. And, but I, I want to give a disclaimer with this one because I've had many clients complain about this one. On Mac, it's phenomenal. But on Windows, there's something missing. Um, they're, they're working on it. But on Windows, when you do that, enable new outlook, it looks and feels the same. It's caching a lot of data right away and instantly from the, from the browser. So it could slow things down a little bit because they're trying to build everything in one place and there's some missing features, but give it a try. This could be where for your users, you're keeping the same Outlook client that they're using with a little bit of change into the layout, but it's getting the work done because it's cached instantly and it's online uh, basically. So um, keep that in mind, give it a try. Is, is my, uh, is it good the screen? Should I zoom in a little bit maybe? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Let's see if I could, I minimize it here a little bit. All right, this is OWA. Welcome to the OWA world if you haven't used it. If you are a user of OWA, congratulations. You're ahead of most people. Um, this is the one app that with 90% of the Microsoft licensing, you have access to it. Uh, whether it's the cheapest to the most expensive one, you will have access to the, from free to the most expensive one, users have access. The only place where you don't have access to it, if you don't have if you a, a Microsoft email, let's say you're on G Suite and you have just the Office products like uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, then you're not going to need this because you don't have access to it. And I just want to also call out one thing I didn't mention. The Outlook client, you don't need to have a Microsoft license to use it. The, the Outlook client can be used on in a G Suite organization. Uh, I've seen a lot of clients that have G Suite, but they still have, they purchased the Office Pro Plus is what it used to be called. And it's basically a desktop, the enterprise apps. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Access, but then they get Outlook as well. So some users are like, I want to connect my Gmail to it. You can do that. Not the case with the online version because this is more specific to uh, Microsoft and uh, you need to have a Microsoft account, whether it's your live.com or your organization account, so personal or work or school. I'm, I'm showing you my work account, uh, my demo tenant. So 
um, this is what you're saying. This is this very similar layout. I really enjoy using the web app. I have it bookmarked in my browser. So every time I launch Edge, I have multiple tabs that open right away. As you can see, I'm navigating between my OneDrive. I had my presentation here on this side, my to-do, and a lot of other things. These are usually on the left-hand side. Microsoft has been playing around with the layout a lot just to see the user behavior and how they're clicking on these buttons. Your organization, if it's early adopter into the online features, then they might see you might see things a little bit different um, or if you are not, then you also might see different uh, features. But for the most part, the navigation, if it's on the left or at the bottom for you, you can navigate the same way as your client between the top three things, which is your mail, your calendar, and your and the contacts, the people. However, on the client, you have your um, tasks, I think it's called. Uh, here, you have to do. But to do is nicer because it's the web version of um, it's to, to do. We, we had a presentation on it as well. Uh, you can there are some features that I'm going to show you where you can use to do and it's really nice. Uh, you can access it by opening a new tab. You can click on it and go directly to it and you can see all the actions that you have and all the to do items that you have for the day and the future and so on. Um, and then you have the navigation on top that is also very similar between home, view, help, um, and some actions that you can take. The quick steps are actually here as well, and then you can manage them. Uh, and at the bottom, you can navigate between all the tabs of your email. So if I start replying to an email, as you can see here, I see a bunch of tabs here at the bottom. We'll get more in details in a second, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the layout. Uh, and you can change that view by going to the view section and changing how it's displayed for you here. I'm keeping it that way. This is the most common way of using it. On the left-hand side, you got the groups. And as I mentioned, Patrick, I unfortunately don't have a group set up here because I wasn't planning on talking about it, but um, you can use and create a new office group in here, or you can um, manage existing groups. So if you already have, um, a GMB created, you should be able to see it on the left hand side under groups and try to manage it that way. Now, let, let's start by looking at the settings. So because it's now you're in the web, you, you can see your profile. This is my account, my email, I can view it. This is the same as you go across all the office applications. And then on the top left hand side, you can access all your office applications right there rather than switching between the client and this, you have access to everything here. If you click on this gear at the top right, this, this is your settings. And uh, from there, you can uh, manage all your settings. The old version, there's a button that says view all outlook settings. If you still have that, you just need to click on view all outlook settings. For me, I'm, I'm already there. They changed the layout for me a little bit. Um, and you can get to the general settings mail, calendar, and people. From there, the first thing is the layout. A lot of people, it's mixed feelings on the focused inbox. Those that are in marketing tend to really hate the focused inbox. Those who are in more um, like on the technical side, they love this uh, because it kind of filters out a lot of the automated messages that they get from their system. So. Um, I like the focused inbox versus the other, so I keep it that way. By default, I think it's do not sort my messages. I like to change it to the two inboxes. Um, I hope you're by now familiar with it, but basically the focus is Microsoft's AI telling you that we think these are the most important. They're targeted to you. Your email was typed in it. The other is usually if it's a marketing email or uh, a spam email, it tends to go there. So if you've used Yammer or Viva Analytics or any of these tools from Microsoft, even they tend to go to the other inbox. Yeah, I just you. I just want to make a point on that. Like it's amazing how good Outlook is at filtering that. Like their AI kills it because every time something's in my focus, it's something I need to focus on. 
every time something's in my other, I don't need to focus on it. I don't know how they do it. It kind of blows my mind, but it is spot on. So it saves yeah. so much of my time when it comes to email. I might only check email like once a day now already. Yeah. And I already don't want to do that because it's just a productivity killer. But that's been great. Like that's if anyone that's not using focus inbox, it's going to be weird at first. Try it. You're going to love it. And just, you know, you check your other two, but most of the time you can just select them all and delete most of the time. Yeah. And it learns. So if you, it learns from your behavior. So if you're always deleting, I get those Microsoft teams reminder that I didn't reply to an email because I personally have it set up to notify me instantly when someone messaged me. I read the title. It's like, oh, this person picked me on teams, delete. And now they all go to the other because I keep deleting those emails. Same thing with a lot of different emails that I get. It looks at my behavior. I have service now as well. So I've used that. And every time I move them to a folder, I don't read them. I'm not spending enough time on them. They learn that this guy does not care about those emails. Let's just move them to the other inbox. And like you said, Tahir, it's spot on. So Yeah, yeah and what I've been notice, noticing because of that is all of my emails now go to other. No, I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> you're not reading anything. I'm not now. reading any of it, no. Explains uh, why I sent you five emails now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second thing I really like, and this is, to me, that was the seller for a while, is this feature. If you click on Compose and Reply and then scroll down to the Undo Send, I'm telling you, I tried an Outlook client to look everywhere for this feature. I looked at the settings, I Googled, I even reached out to Microsoft. How can we get this into Outlook? It doesn't, it's, there's not an easy way to doing it in Outlook client, but it is available for you now if you use, oh, well, this is especially helpful to me in the morning because I haven't had my coffee yet and I send an email and I realize I shouldn't have sent that email within seconds, because you know, your brain is a little bit slow in the morning, but you, you can do, you can say delay it five seconds. That's not significant time where it's, um, you know, a minute, because I think in Outlook, the only way you can do is schedule time. But like, if you do it every time, it gets annoying to schedule it a minute or five minutes advance. This is literally just 10, five to 10 seconds. So let's do uh, five seconds so I can show you this, but it's really nice because Every time I send an email now when I'm in OA, I get a kind of at the bottom, I, I see the undo button. So let me save it. I'm going to create a new email. And let's send it to anyone, myself, potentially. And hit the send, send. Now you see this un sending, send. I still have five seconds, undo. This now didn't send. It went back into my inbox and I have uh, the ability to edit it again. It happened way more than I would like to tell you. So um, that is the feature that made me really switch to OA. So I hope it helps. Um, t five or 10 is the only option you get with this one. The next one I want to talk about now within your email. So you'll notice me go feature after feature. We have only 15 minutes left. And if you have questions at the end, um, Ping them and, and we can talk about it. So um, does the undo feature sync to client setting? Um, no, that's why it's only in OA. And that's why I really enjoy using OA is because of that specific feature. So I don't know why Microsoft could not do it on the client side. Maybe their settings is too difficult, but it, it doesn't work. Um, if you, you see this arrow here at the left, by default, they have um, conversation set up. So if you want to go between all the emails that were sent, click on that drop down arrow. Uh, that Chevron icon allows you to go down and see all the emails that were sent and by who, because you know how sometimes the replies get messed up. If you started drafting an email, I really enjoy that part, is when I start drafting an email, then someone else replies to that same email, you can also navigate it that way. Very similar to the client, but there's that little arrow that you need to click on so you can see all of them. You can even flag a, only a specific like, um, part of that message rather than all of it. So I see there's the flag right here. So I'm only flagging that reply or the draft that I have rather than all of it. 
All right. Um, in terms of shortcuts on this one, it's actually control question mark. So it is the, uh, the uh, shift forward slash or question mark. And you can get to see all of the shortcuts that they have on the Outlook web app. Uh, there are quite a few of them uh, that if you want to use. The quick steps are very similar to the ones also on the desktop. Uh, keep in mind, sometimes your computer will overwrite some of these, depends on what where your mouse is selected. Um, so if there are a computer shortcut that overlaps with, or a web browser shortcut, it might not work. Uh, that's something I've, I've noticed. But I quickly like to navigate between my tabs. Uh, did not work. See, that's where uh, navigation in using shortcuts sometimes doesn't work because your browser in this case um, took over. It froze. Anyway, but that's how you get to your shortcut uh, shift question mark. And you can see all the shortcuts that are available to you in um, OWA. Um, let's continue a little bit with settings. So, um, some organization allow you to customize things more than others, especially the um, layout, uh, I would say. So in terms of the colors and the appearance, it's under general appearance. Uh, in some cases, if you just click on settings, you can see all the um, modes that you have available to you and the colors and the themes. Uh, some organization only allow that top part or you can go dark or light for accessibility reasons, but they want to keep their branding for the organization branding. So they don't allow you to change the theme. Um, but if they allow you, these are some cool ways to change it. I usually have it on dark mode. I reset it now for this demo, but I like the dark mode a little bit more than the light mode. The light mode is the more common, so I'm, I'm going to keep it that way for this session. All right, uh, another thing in settings, let's go back to mail, uh, the customized actions. So when you are in an email, there are a few things here that you can customize. The quick action bar, which is the one on top. These are the default ones. You can add an archive button so you can quickly archive an email or move to folder button that allows you to move. Uh, and then you can select which folder you want, it. You want to move the email to. This is just basically changing how things are displayed. So it's telling you at the moment, next, if you hover over an email, these are the three things that you see. These are the quick actions that you have. If you open an email, so you double click on an email and you open it or you select it. As of now, I only see these five options, which is reply, reply all, forward, forward as attachment, which I can disable because I don't ever forward as an attachment. Sent to OneNote, I do that quite a lot. I have an email and I just want it to put it in OneNote. So you can customize these on the email, which in on the client side, you get display a bunch of things, but it's really hard to manage those in a very nice UI. Um, you can do it on the top left ribbon if someone's thinking about that, but you can't do it within the email because you see everything. So I like this because I can tell it now, I'm gonna add to this reply by I am because I tend to usually go back to the user and message them. You can add the flag. Maybe if you get a lot of junk emails, you can do that. Uh, open in a new window. So everything I'm adding now in a second, you'll see it add the Viva Insight. That's a, that's a cool one as well. You'll see it added into the message surface where if I click on an email, I'll see all of these. All right. Uh, let's close out of this, go back to one of my emails, this one that I was just working on. Um, and as you can see now, uh, let me go to an, an older email and show you how some of these things now changed. Oh, the pop-up is not showing. Okay. But yeah, cause I, I popped it out. I'm only sharing this, this part of my screen. But trust me, all of these will show up the way it was showing in terms of the um, actions. Then the next thing I want to talk about is sending emails. And here you can do the same thing as Outlook. That's that's similar where you can schedule a send. 
Um, in Outlook, however, the issue I see is when you schedule something to send on the client, then you need to have you need to be logged in, connected. Your computer is not locked and online and Outlook is running. Otherwise, it's not going to send. That's from my experience. However, in this case, because it's on the web, you can schedule a send, select the date and time that you want to send it using the custom time and then hit send. This will allow you to send it maybe tomorrow. You don't need to be online. You can just close out of everything and it will do it because it is using the web. With the client, that that doesn't work. You need to be still you keep your computer unlocked. From my experience, that's how it, 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 it works. So I really like this feature and I like to tell people that's why there's a drop down next to the send button. So take a look at it. All right. So back to the settings here, um, there's the search on the top left. So if there's something that I failed to mention and you want to see if you can also find here then you can definitely search it. So I'm going to give you an example, automatic replies. You want to set up an automatic reply, you can have that as well uh, using, um, I just searched for it and it popped up that setting item. Uh, I can turn on automatic reply, select date and time, same thing as, oh, uh, as Outlook client, you can set up internal and external and uh, select the time frame that you want the automatic reply to send. Uh, I, in my opinion, think this is more uh, robust than the client one. It does sync. You don't have to set it up on both sides, but uh, you only need to do it in one place. I like this version because sometimes I forget to set up my auto reply. So I go on my phone, I log into the Outlook app, and I have the message that I need to already save, and I just enable it, and I get to send the automatic reply. All right, let's get more into some of the email features that we have in here. So um, I'm going to look at this email. It's it's from Microsoft reminder for um, me to send. I have some <laughs> open AI stuff. Let's see what else I have here. You see how all the actions that I added, they're shown here on top. Anyway. So the next one I want to show you is a little bit more features here on the ribbon on top. So you see this icon here, the, the clock. Uh, if I maximize this a little bit more, it might display it exactly what it is. But uh, this one is, I like the snooze feature. So sometimes um, an email is important, but sometimes this, uh, not in that exact moment. Like you want to look at it, but you're busy doing other things. And you don't want to multitask. So this one allows you to, it reminds you to look at this again later, not at this moment. But it, if you get a lot of emails, this might be a really cool feature that you can use. So you can click on snooze and tell me later today at 1 p.m. There's some default ones. Snooze it. It's gone. Right? So this email is not going to show up. Um in your inbox, but at 1 p.m., I'll receive this email again. So that's the snooze feature, and you just get to click on that snooze button, select the email, and click on the snooze button, and select the time you want to actually receive that email. Another similar thing that gets me very distracted sometimes is that when you have this huge thread of emails, right? Now, it goes back and forth, back and forth, and you're not related to it, but your manager or someone decided to copy you on it. Or in some cases, it could be a communication or an outreach email that has a bunch of follow-ups. Let's say five, six, seven, ten. I've seen a lot more follow-ups for something that I don't care about. And every time I get a new email, email, it pops up on top, like, leave me alone. So what you can do is you can, uh, if it's a thread like this one, you can right-click and ignore so when you click on ignore, it's telling you this will delete all the messages to, uh, selected for that conversation uh, and it will just not show up. Anything else that will, anyone that will apply, reply um, will go directly into your trash because you don't need it. Uh, I highly recommend using it in more of communication threats that you definitely know you don't need. Sometimes automated messages from the system you're already looking into it or you know you're not going to need it, then you can do that. 
and those messages will just go into delete. And as you can see, when I right click, there are a lot of things, we'll get into some of them, but um, there are a lot of features also when you right click on an email. All right, we uh, looked at a lot of customization here. By default, you have that flag a message, which you can use to flag a message, and then you can get into uh, all your flagged items. I'll, I'll show you here in a little bit, but you can mark any emails with a flag so you can easily find it. Um, so now I clicked on this one. I have multiple ones that are flagged. I think there might be at the bottom. I'm going to select this one and this one. Now, how do you quickly get into them and find all the flagged emails? There's a filter button here on top, and you can just click on flag, then you'll see all your flagged emails. Similarly, you can do that filter for has files, mentions, and so on. And you see how quick it is. I don't have any mention. No one wants to talk to me. But um, this at least allows you to do some really, really quick filtering. Uh, that is, I, in my opinion, is a lot faster and easy to access than the client. Um, if you notice at the top here, I have a couple of emails that no matter how many people email me, they will continue to show up on top. So these are the pinned emails. So I pin them. I want to always see them on top. This could be something important. It could be something that you need to see all the time, um, but you can pin it. That may be uh, something that a password or, or maybe not a password. That's not a really good example, but something that you always need to look at that would be really helpful to do uh let's see what else i talked about email signature also email signature allows you to do a lot of customization which is really nice on this side of things just like the outlook client um if someone is bothering you let's let's take a look at this let's find taher's email here if he's bothering me with this i can um, ignore future I can block you know block the sender never block a sender will allow you to always make sure that this is a safe sender um, so you can you can add a lot of the settings here from by simply right clicking on um, on any of the emails that you're getting if you, you there's the junk also I don't know if it's showing here but report as junk will basically tell um, that this is a safe sender, but it's like, just take it to the junk, uh, inbox. All right. Uh, let's see. There's one more feature I have in my notes here. I wanted to talk about is also forwarding. You can set up automatic forwarding if your organization has enabled this one. And I want to emphasize on the if, because the majority of organizations tend to turn off forwarding, but you can also do that if you manage multiple inboxes. Just select enable and then type in the email and keep a copy of a forwarded message is something I like to do because if you don't click on that button, your inbox will be empty. So unless you want that and you never want to come back and see anything in this inbox, then just go ahead and um, uncheck that box. They also have the rules here, uh, inbox rules, uh, which is, is very similar to the one that we have on the client side. So you can add the new rule, name it, and then add conditions and exceptions. So uh, it's also a cool way of doing it. If you have more than multiple, if you have one condition, but you want to take multiple actions on this one, uh, then uh, you can add as many. I don't know how many. Is there a limit? I actually don't know. Uh, if there's a limit on how many actions you can take but it sounds like i was able to add four different actions right now let's exit out of this let's go to compose a new email see what features we have here um so uh if you click on the three dots i, I said that in many other presentations i had is when you click on the three dots you tend to see a lot more features than you have expected so the top ribbon of the message all the typical ones that you also have on the client side um you can add your signature important email uh at mentions add add-ons now it depends where you select these will show up see um because i'm in the body of the email now the loop 
showed up if you were in the team's advanced team session we talked about what this is this is the same thing added here but let's say i click on the three dots there are a lot more options the polls which is using microsoft um forms there's viva insight and a lot of other things that you can use your templates will also show up here um the one thing i wanted to uh show up here i'm blanking now was message options uh, more options here uh request red receipt so that is also available on the site i've had people ask me in the past oh you can't do that well no you can do it you just it's for microsoft's sake they like to hide things sometimes but it's like the three dots and you get to go to more options then you can request red re receipts on that email or delivery receipt if you want whatever options you normally select on the client you can do the same thing on this site. Um, the, the poll, we talked about this. There's the poll. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've never used scheduling a poll. It sounds like something where you can schedule a poll ahead of time. Uh, for an email, I've only used a poll that use, utilizes Microsoft. Oh, OK. See? I learn sometimes as I go with, with Outlook because they keep adding features and they update it as I go. Like sometimes tomorrow I log in and there's an update. Unlike the client, you have to actually do the update and restart your computer and the app. This one it just shows up. Uh, and that's a scenario where I, it's probably have been there for a while. I just always go over it. Um, I tend to just use this first one because it uses Microsoft Forms and I'm very familiar with everything and it gets saved into my Microsoft Forms. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit more into the email uh, in the last five minutes I have. The app mention is really cool. You can add mention someone. If that person was copied on an email and then you add mention them, it will move it into the two section. I really like app mention. And if everybody also used, um, outlook on the web there are a lot of other features let me try to find uh, another email a tires email I'll pick on it again um there, there are a lot of features that you could also use from here that may not be available to you um on the on the desktop so if i go into this email this was undeliverable and i highlight your message to admin could not be delivered you can see that i got four new options here so what are these? The first one is highlight. The second one is add a note in your note in one note. So if I click on this one, it will launch one note and I can add a note related to that message that I highlighted. So that's one cool thing. Then my favorite though is, I'm gonna highlight again, is the reply. People get so confused on how I did that. But if I hit reply, it will start a new, draft a new message. And I can say per the, the low note or you can highlight something instead of i see a lot of people go back to an older email and say see my notes at the highlighted in red you don't need to do that just highlight it highlight what you need to reply to and say per this note i think we should reset this password right so um that's one way a really cool feature that it has. Another thing is what you can do, the last option that you see here is create a task. So if I click on this, it will add it to my tasks and I can modify it, add the due date and so on, so quickly from within that email that I received. All right. Um, I know we're on time. I have like 10, 15 more features that I wanted to show, but unfortunately I ran out of time. I think I covered some of the top ones that I wanted to talk about. Maybe one last thing really quick as we're here is um, on the left-hand side, you can go to your OneDrive easily, Viva and your to-do, but there's also this attack, the, the files section. I really love this because it can tell you exactly which emails were sent to you and who sent them and they had attachments. I always lose my attachments, but when I go to the web in a click of a button, I can navigate to them. I can see my sent emails that had files and any right. deleted emails that had files and so on. This entire presentation was worth it for that, 
for that one tip. You did a lot of amazing tips, but that <laughs> one just blew my mind because I'm always yeah. trying to hunt down that quote I sent or that document someone sent me. So is this just in the web app? Yeah, this is available, I believe, on the client as well, but it's not as intuitive. And a lot of those things, you see how quickly I'm navigating between them. If I was doing the same demo on the client side, then I would have been, you know, it's, it takes a lot of time. Uh, That's cool. The way you can get to it, I think, is you have to go to the search and then um, on, in the client. And then on top, you search has attachments. And then we'll show you everything that has attachments. So you need to play a little bit with the search bar on top to filter everything you need. I'm not saying the client is not powerful, but I really want to emphasize how really easy and simple it is to use the web version. Nice. That is a really good last tip. Well, well I'm going to let the guys back in. We'll get some questions. Is there anything else you wanted to share here on the screen? No, I'm good. Really, I, mean, I'll remove the screen. I can go over a lot more things, but I think <laughs> it's good to see if there are some more questions in the last few minutes we have. Surprise, everybody. I let you back in. Um, that was great, Kamal. Everyone that's here, really appreciate it. We do have a couple questions real quick. Keith Steverson said, can you tell us more about the new Outlook feature adding at name in the email? Adding? Uh, it was at, at name in the email. I think he might mean, mean like you can tag people in the email yeah, and how yeah. you do in Teams. Yeah, you can do this uh, on both the client and the web version. You just click on the app mention. That's one of the last things I showed. And you can tag the individual. I genuinely, I, I use it in um, a lot of scenarios where someone, I don't know if they go by a nickname, their first or last name. So instead of butchering the name, or coming up with my own name, I just say out and I mention them. Mm -hmm. You can even delete the last name. So once you hit the out, if the organization, they do last name, comma, first name, just click in the middle and you can delete the last name with the comma and space and you can keep only the first name. So that's another trick that you can just make it look very short and simple rather than the whole email. So for you, Tahir Hamid, it would be probably the whole name, but I can just hover over it and delete your last name. I'm only tagging you still, but it's showing just the first name. Nice. Solid. And then uh, Peter Pham says, does undo feature sync to client's setting? No. No. Okay. This is only on the web. If you send an email from the client side, you're, you're screwed. You need to try to, uh, what, what was it? There's a feature in the file section where you uh, request to... Uh, withdraw the email i forgot the name now i'm blanking on it uh let me see file but when after you send an email you can request it back or something it never worked yeah, I, did a, I did a tech tip on that and i forget the name of it too <laughs> yeah it's just it never worked for me recall. I, ne I never recall recall, recall it yeah. just doesn't work and it's embarrassing <laughs> the, the end user is gonna get come on try to recall your email i'm like oh, yeah i should have paid attention but <laughs> That's why I like the web. The web also has the autocorrect, which is awesome. But I also use Grammarly extension. It works also Grammarly because it's on the web. So a lot of your browser extension will work because they're there. Um, I, um, I am also a Buckeye, Ohio State uh, Buckeye. So in November, there's an extension that crosses out all the M's in my browser because we don't like the Michigan. <laughs> So uh, I like it because I, I can use it. And all my emails that have M or the word Michigan, it gets crossed in red. So, so there's cool funny. things that you can still do because you're on the web. You can customize things. I like customizing things. I don't want Microsoft to control everything I do. That's why I'm really, out of everyone you'll probably talk to, I'm the most passionate about the web app, the Outlook web app. Yeah, that's cool. I don't think it gets enough uh, attention, so it was cool to, to give it yeah. a little more attention today. Well, I think that was all the questions. Come on, once again, I've learned a lot. I hope that people, um, you know, the, the individuals here today have learned a lot, and um, and we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up. Everybody that's here, make sure to visit the IT provider that um, invited you. On their website, there is a training, training tab. There's a Train My Team tab. There's an upcoming webinars tab. So make sure to check out all the upcoming webinars coming out. We're usually 
we usually have the next three, six months scheduled out. And um, we usually get awesome people like Kamal on. So really appreciate y'all being here today. Hope you learned something and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. If you need help with any of this, of course, you can reach out to the provider that you're either a client of or, you know, part of their community. So thank you so much, Call Kamal. Appreciate it again. And uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Awesome. See you next time. All right, thanks, everybody.